items could go. What do you mean? I could go as far as I can. No, we talk about <coughs> Shabbat and Yom Tov. We have a limit. How many? How many amot? Two thousand amot. Not not more than two thousand amot. So just like I could only go two thousand amot, and not only that, the direction where my two thousand amot extends, so as my possessions could go. Hamoser behem atolibno. Someone who gives his animal to his son, or the roya, or to a shepherd. We're talking about uh, where he gave it on Yom Tov. It's like the it's it's like the owner's uh, whom it's our owner's uh, extent and owner's limits uh, because he gave it on Yom Tov. In other words, even if I give it to someone else, it still retains my the owner's limit. I gave my head. I someone came to my house. It was raining. I gave them my head. He could only go with my head as far as I could go. He can't go uh, further. Oh, because if you want to go get it, you should be able to get it? Or? No, the head cannot be... The head has... Um, because it has the limit of travel uh, of the owner. What in the head? Like your head? Uh, it's like this. Every person no, has a... a uh, uh, the dia diameter of 2,000 amot, which is re really radius. 2,000 amot, radius to in each in this, in this direction. If I'm here, then I have 2,000 amot around me. My friend is, let's say, at the end of my boundary. He's 2,000 amot this way. What is his boundary? It's 2,000 amot around his place. He comes to my place, and he borrows my head. Then he goes home to his place, that's fine. But if he wants to go in the opposite direction, this way, even one step, since he's already at the edge of 2,000, with my, if he wants to go with my head, boom. He has to leave the head behind. That's the enough community, that's the practical difference, application of this halakha. Let's look further, look how, much, how deep this could actually uh, be applied. It says like this. Keilim amiyochadim leechad min ha'achim shebebayit. Vessels that belong to one of the brothers in the house. Hareil kiragli kiraglav. They belong lay like his feet. Vishien miyochadim and those that don't belong to that brother. Harei elukim makom sheholchim. Then they belong to the place where people go from that house. What does that mean? Where the cases where the father died and each one of the sons inherited some of the things. And once he inherited, the father died on Erev Yom Tov. And therefore, as soon as he died, the possessions were distributed among his sons. And some of the things, according to the, let's say he left a will and testament. According to the will, <coughs> let's say Camera belongs to uh, Israel, and the Camera belongs to Malkia, two brothers. So now, can Israel take the Camera? Yeah, no. How far can Camera travel? Only according to Israel's home. How, where could Gemara go? But, uh, I'll, I'll kill. Well, but how would the other person know, let's say, if he borrowed the thing, the 2,000 or more, from his, from the place that he borrowed? From? Yes, yes. Whatever you borrow. Yes. Uh, what, whatever you borrow, you got to ask. So, no, the guy lives not next to him. Yes, but course. what if he doesn't? If he doesn't, how would he know that? Maybe, no, he has to ask. Maybe this item itself was borrowed from someone else. Yeah. So he has to know how far I'm borrowing from you. Is it yours? What, what's the tchum? Which, what is the boundary? Tchum is that? Not Bukhari. Yeah, like, why bring such a specific case about a father who passed on Arab Yom Tov? Because uh, what a specific, specific detailed case. How is this relevant to anything else? Okay, well, that's, that's good because... The Mishnah usually doesn't bring such, you know, uh, 
it brings cases that are like relative. It, you know, like it's it's very. Um, I think it's just using it to it's very example. broad. You know, this is a very specific use case here, and a very specific example. Why why discuss a son who inherited an object from his father and another son? How far away can you know? Does the boundary still apply? That's basically right where the mission is going with this. This is not the Gemara. This is the Mishnah. Well, we let's examine how what kind of cases we had so far. We had the most simple case. Mm-hmm. It's yours. How far can you from go? the beginning? Yeah. How far can you go? Yeah. Then we said it's yours, but you just gave it to your son. Okay. Which is uh, mo- next most common case. You could give it to your wife. You could give it to your anybody. But you gave it. On Yom Tov. So we learned the halacha. To borrow, not to own. To borrow. To borrow. To borrow. We learned the halacha. It's still like yours. On that day, it's yours. Okay. Okay. Uh, then it says, maybe I'm, then it says about inheritance. Over there, <laughs> Rashi says like, like this. That uh, it's not, we'll see in the Gemara, but why exactly Gemara brings it? What's the Chidush? Maybe because you may, may think that since they didn't take it yet, since they didn't take possession take of it, okay. so maybe it's like the father's, the way father was. The way father was. Even though he's not around. He's not around. Oh, can someone say? Oh, it's early. Thank you. So, <laughs> by the way, on Tuesday night we have seminary here. There's like 20 girls here, right around me. I'm on, I'm on the only man. So the same thing happens. Light goes off, and so I guess they go and turn it off. So that, okay. But they don't get scared. <coughs> Only the men get scared. No, I'm joking. <laughs> they don't get scared. If I have one man in the town, they don't get scared. I protect them. Okay, whatever. And it's supposed to be like that. <coughs> but it's, it's like CNN, you know. Here's the battery down the other one. That's two different devices. All right. Of course it is. <laughs> Four, four platforms, streaming live, 13 devices. Guys, are we ready to go? So I, I don't know. I admit that this is this is, this is a <laughs> complex case. I don't know exactly. We'll see in the Gemara. Let's go on. Hashoel okay. klimi chaveiro, meir yom tov, someone who borrows a uh, vessel from his friend, an erev yom tov, keragle hashoel. What does what, what shoel mean? Has borrower. Legs. It has lo, it's like legs of the borrower. Be yom tov, if he borrowed an yom tov, keragle hamashil. Is the lender. There is a borrower and lender. So this is self explanatory. Look at this case. I love this case. A woman who borrowed one of the ingredients from her friend. Let's say, in order to make bread, what do you need? Flour, water, and salt. Salt, let's say. So let's say she had flour and water, but she needed some salt. She borrowed salt. Made bread. It says over here, because she borrowed salt from her friend, she could only bring this loaf of bread to the limits of hers and the friend's. In other words, like this. Let's say hers goes, uh, goes from here to here, and her friend's goes from here she, she was here, to further down. They are limited. Her friend could go only not more than... Two th- the bread cannot go to the place. W- it could only be in the, in the common o- overlapping area by o- both of them. Mm-hmm. It cannot go out for this woman, and of the limit of this woman. It cannot go out from the limit of this woman. So it's like... Both ingredients are there. The salt is with you as if salt is here and the water and the flour is here. Mm-hmm. There's a question, but one second. Isn't it batel? Salt. Let's yeah, say like salt belongs to, to Leah 
and the flour and water belongs to uh, Rachel. Why? So we say that the fact that she gave salt now puts a limit on this bread, her limit. Yeah, it's like it's her item. Salt is very insignificant. It's not, it will not make the bread. If she borrows flour, I understand because flour is the main ingredient right. in bread. Salt is like a flavor, right? The answer is as long as you feel the flavor, if you put enough salt to feel it, uh-huh. there's no bitum. Because what is bitum? Bitum means it's not there. It's not, it's negligible. It's not there. But if, but, but, but by definition, spices and salt, even in small amounts, they make the is dish. still there. They make the difference. They, that's why we put them. Otherwise, would anybody put salt that if you don't feel it? They would you put pepper if you don't feel it? You put it to taste. Once you put it to taste, we say that it's there. Mm-hmm. So that, then it's not batel. Okay. Rabbi Yehuda poter b'mayim ebnei she'en b'ayim mamash. Rabbi Yehuda says water, no. The water, if you b- b- borrowed water from Leah and she has her limits, you don't have to worry about that. She'en b'ayim mamash. So this is my question. What line are we on? Line, we're on line, on the last line. Water, no. So this is my question. Rabbi Yehuda holds water is insignificant. Because so there's two ways to look at water. On one hand, with, with, there is a way to put it. You're right. I don't feel once I eat it, I don't feel the water. But the whole bread is possible because of water. Mm-hmm. So question is, do you look at its existence in a theoretical way? You know that it's there in your head because without it, you wouldn't be able to have this. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, you don't feel it. <laughs> So, Chachamim say, if you don't feel it, I'm sorry, Chachamim say, you know that it's there. Rabbi Yudah holds, we don't go with the fact that you, in your seichel you know, in your mind's eye you know that it exists. Like, for example, air. Do you know that air exists? Like, when I go like this, you don't see create it. wind, you feel it. If you're fanning with something, you feel it more. But we know, because of that, because when you... F- Fan, you feel it, that means that it's always there. There's a world around us is filled with molecules of air, gas. So uh, we know that it exists, but we don't feel it. So we don't see. So there is, this is my look if it's uh, there for significant or not. Okay. Gemara says, Gemara continues, Gemara says, so one thing you see there, if you have an item, in your possession, you have to uh, be cognizant of, of its items. Limit. Gemara says, "Matnisim to look at Rabbi Dosa." Our mission is like Rabbi Dosa. It's not like Rabbi Dosa. The time Rabbi Dosa Omer, Rabbi Dosa said, "Vamri lo Abba Shol Omer." And some say that it was Abba Shol who said, "Halakeh behema mechaviro." Someone who bought an animal from his friend me'er of Yom Tov, an er of Yom Tov. Now, what did our mission say that somebody is on the end of Yom Tov? It becomes yours, and it goes like the new owner. If you bought it, or you borrowed it, or you took it on the end of Yom Tov, the day before Yom Tov, it assumes, if it was yours when Yom Tov came, it assumes your techum. But Rabbi Dosa says, Afal pishalom masra lo el Yom Tov, even though he gave it to him on Yom Tov, you may think that then it's it's supposed to be like the original owner. No, it belongs to Lakeach. And someone who gives an animal to a shepherd, someone who gives, so it says over here that if, if it's a shepherd, even if you give it to him on Yom Tov, it's like shepherds. So this part is not the Kaum Mishnah. In our Mishnah, we said that if you gave it to shepherd on Erev Yom Tov, it's like shepherds' feet. But if you give it to him on Yom Tov, it's your feet. Our Mishnah made it very clear that we look at who, in whose possession it was on, when Yom Tov started. So this is the case. I gave uh, an animal uh, to, my, to my shepherd who works for me, on Yom Tov. Whose, uh, whose limit is it, is, does this animal have? 
Whose uh, limit does the shepherd have? I gave it to him on Yom Tov. You. Mine. Because everything is dependent on where the animal was on Erev Yom Tov, when Yom Tov started. When Yom Tov started. Over here, I had it when Yom Tov started, and I gave it to him only after Yom Tov started. That means that it assumed my limits. But Rabbi Dosa says, no, it's always uh, uh, shepherds. How could we explain this? He always had a shepherd. <laughs> Even if I gave it to him on Yom Tov. Give more answers. What, what, what do you think could be the answer? Uh, I have a couple of answers. Go ahead. That's One good. I love it. It's, it's in the flock, so it's like bottle in the flock. Interesting. The other answer, I, I would have, I would have think that it's the nature of a shepherd to go with the sheep wherever they need to go. You mean the sheep go with the shepherd? Yeah. It's not like he has all the sheep with him. So it's like he's just tagging along. He's not specifically taking that sheep. He's just taking the flock. Well, we don't go with, one thing is for sure. We don't <coughs> consider an animal a, as a deciding factor. It has to be a human being. Right. So therefore, there's only two options. <coughs> the owner or the or shepherd. The shepherd. Uh-huh. Pick one of these two options. In our Mishnah, now the case is where I gave my animal uh, to, to, to my shepherd, Anyam to. Our Mishnah seems to say... That's his behemoth. An animal, behemoth. No, but the, the Mishnah, now forget the Mishnah, the Mishnah says, behemoth, ke... Ke ragli ba'alim. Ke ragli ba'alim, right. That's if I give it an yomtu. An yomtu. But Rabbi Dosa says, ke ragli haro'e, like a shepherd, even if I give it an yomtu. Right, so... Bright, bright, it says it. Bright, that contradicts the Mishnah. Contradicts the Mishnah. Yeah. So what could be the answer? So Gemara is going to say the following answer. This is your shepherd that you give it to him every single week. So, In other words, it's not the, random. It's the, it's the shepherd that you anticipate. You knew that you're going to give it to him. Oh, so basically ahead of time. Ahead of... Oh, so it was already his before, before it you was, gave it to him. No, there's an agreement before you have you know that you're going to give it to him. You know, you know that animals are going to become his for the Yom Tov. It's like an agreement before Yom Tov. Like on Yom Tov. It's not so much agreement. It's because you do it every single week that it already predetermines your mindset for, uh, in terms of the animal. In other words, Mishnah, is to, Mishnah that says that if you gave it to him on Yom Tov, it's like your... That's talking about a uh, random ro, uh, ro, a, a shepherd that... You needed somebody, and someone walked in and said, I'll graze your animal. So then, it's like you You tell them where the animals could go, because uh, it's your, the animals have your limit. People went out to graze in Yomtov? Looks like it. It looks like, yeah, there were, uh, there were, there were shepherds. Right. shepherds. There were shepherds. But it, it seems like work. I don't know why. It's just on my mind. It's like, it's a job. If you're a shepherd, it's your job. Yeah, but you have to feed your animals on Shabbat. You have to feed your animals on... Right? It's like, I mean, if they're hungry, you can't leave them. So right. You have to feed them, yeah. It's the same thing with grazing. But, uh, but it's his job, because it's responsibility. Sometimes you have to take care of them. Sometimes there's so something happens. It doesn't mean that you Some, work. Sometimes a wolf comes, you have to pr- protect them, right? Okay. It's a job, right? It's a job. So I hear what you I hear what you're saying. So you can't graze your animals on your own? Apparently, yeah, you can. What is the shepherd doing? Is he shacking this animal? Is he... Blocking this animal? Grazing, grazing, grazing. He's just watching it. Brings them out and watch them. Mm-hmm. It may be an easy job if, if nothing happens. Yeah, if you have like 20 of them. If you have 300 of them, it's not an easy job. Then you really have to be on top of it. You know, it depends on the sheep you have to Okay, okay, okay. You're right. So I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know exactly. Uh, it seems that they had some people. Who now, what if it was a goy? So then you could say, still, you could say, still, it's like my reglayim, my limit. Uh, because great doesn't have a limit. But you have a limit. Your but you have a limit. a limit. You have a limit, right. So maybe we could say like this, that if it's, let's say, great that you hire every single Shabbat, every single Yom Tov. So then 
you know that your animals are going to become his as soon as Yom Tov starts. He's going to come. He's going to come in in the morning. He's going to take, pick up all your animals and go. And you do it day in, day out. You do it every Shabbat. <coughs> so then it becomes like his red line, which means unlimited. He can go whatever he wants. <coughs> it's not yours anymore. But if it's someone, but if it's a guy that you did not know, he just came, he just happened to come in for a job on Shabbat morning to pick up your animals, then you have to tell them they cannot, they, the animals cannot be, cannot be more. <coughs> Actually, Sorry. Rabbi, so the goy can, can the goy say that he can keep the animals? Goy? Yes, he, he uh, what do you mean to ask? So, you, so you're saying he borrows it, right? No, he just watches it for you. He just watches it. Just watches. So you cannot claim that he, he can own the No, we claim that it's, he, he doesn't it's own it, own. but it, we're saying that he could take it whatever he whatever he uh, No, goes. but then he, uh, if, if it's, like, if it's his, then there would, he can actually do more than, I mean, uh, the tomb. There's no reason to give it to him. Maybe he'll take them and, and disappear. The no, 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 you don't give it to him. Okay. You don't make it his, no. He, can't, he works for you, he takes it, he watches it, he brings it back. Oh. That's it. Okay, let's go on. So... I feel the same Rabbi Dosa. You could even say that it's that our Mishnah agrees with Rabbi Dosa. Velo kasha. It's not a question. Kan beroye echad kan bishnei roim. Here we're talking about one roye that you always trust and you you know that he's going to give it to him. Kan bishnei roim. Here we're talking about any random. The ikonami diktanil live no all roye because it's to your son or to roye, which to a shepherd. It, it like just like your son is designated, he knows you. You know him, he's yours, so the same thing Roy is yours. Shmami no. I'm a Rabbi Barbarchana. Rabbi Barbarchana said, I'm a Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Yochan. Aloch Kribidosa. Aloch is the Kribidosa. I'm a Rabbi Yochan and Haki, I'm a Rabbi Yochan and Aloch Kistam Mishnah. First, Rabbi Barbarchana said that Aloch is the Kribidosa, but on the other hand, he also said that Aloch Kistam Mishnah, which means Aloch is like our Mishnah. But Nana, Behema, Vakalem, Kiragle, Abalem. Velo Kimna, Kan Beroy, Echot, Kan Vishnei Roy. So Gemara says, didn't we say that it, that it, that it's not, they're not arguing? Is you talking about Roy that you always give to? That's why. Okay. Tan Rabbon. New Gemara. Tan Rabbon. Rabbi Stor. Shnaim Shisho'alu Chaluk Echot B'Shutfut. Two people borrowed one robe together. Zele Elech Bo Shecharit Lebet Medrash. This one wants to go in the morning to Shul. And this one wants to wear it in the evening for the Suda, for Beta Mishta, for the party. Uh, they borrow. So now, so let's analyze this. So there is three possible tchumim limits that this Joma could have. The original owners, the first Borrow, second borrow. Now we need the borrowers are two people who are gonna borrow it separate. Uh, to get, uh, they're gonna borrow it t together to use it interchangeably. One is gonna use it certain amount of time during the day, and the other one's gonna use the other times during the day. Discuss this conversation. A hat or utensil, a cleat. But over there there was oh no. The, pro the, the problem is that that's on, but over there there was one. one borrower versus two. One borrower. This is two. Over here, happen? the question is like this. They borrowed it on Erev Yom Tov. Okay. They borrowed it on Erev Yom Tov. So, so the original owner is out. Okay. Now, it's the new First owners. Borrowers. But the problem is that the new owners is actually two people who have two different tchumen. So the first one to borrow with Erev Yom Tov, he's the one, he's the basis point. Because the second one is borrowing it on Yom Tov. No, 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 they both... No, no, let me finish. Oh, okay. The second guy who's borrowing it from the first... So the first one took it Erev Yom Tov, right? So he has possession, right? As soon as he gives it to the second borrower, it's mid Yom Tov. It's already during Yom Tov. I, I see you right? saying. So that means he has the same restriction no, to the no, no, no. As, as the one who borrowed it. You're missing, you're missing the actual words. Because you, you, words say like this. Shnayim. Two. 
Shishalu, who borrow, Haluk Echod, one row, Bishutfut. Bishutfut means as partnership. Okay. Bob Shacharit, Bo Aravit. One's going to wear it in the morning okay. and one in the evening. So we're talk, not talking about like you, you change the whole shot, you change the whole case here. One borrowed it on the Riyadh, then he brought it home, and then the second one borrowed it. No. From the very beginning, when they picked it up from the owner, it was understood that they are both borrowing it, and they're both responsible on it, and they're going to wear it, but they're going to split the time that they are using. Mm -hmm. It's a different case. It's a lot of clarification. Right. So they both borrowed it from him in a partnership, Arab Yom Tov. Right. So, so it comes out like this, that when Yom Tov comes in, this... Item. This item has a uh, joint dual ownership, dual yeah. possession. Mm -hmm. Now we know logically, dual possession means both tchumin are in place. Tchum of this guy and tchum of this guy. The <coughs> limits of this guy and the limits of this guy. Mm -hmm. So the best would be to to see it written down. But how exactly when there's two guys? One is, well, one is going to say, how exactly if there's two guys, what is now the setup? So let's see. Gemara says like this. Ze irav alav lidarom. This guy made a, a roof to go to south. And that was like this. We know that if a person stays in this point, He's able to make a roof tchumen. A roof tchumen means he could go back to the limit 2,000 amot, where he could naturally go, live over there, bread of one soda, and then he extends his tchum 2,000 amot more. Mm. Because if he left his bread here, 2,000 amot, where he is actually sleeping over here, that means that he's showing that he's not staying here, He's actually staying here. So his radius is not over here, but his radius is over here. Mm -hmm. You hear the difference? Yeah. If his radius is, not, is, is here, then he only has 2,000 amot to the south till this point. But if he's sleeping here and he put bread here, that means that he has 4,000 amot, 2,000 amot till, till here, and then another 2,000 amot till here. Let's say the, his destination is 3,000 amot away from where he's sleeping. See, he can't go over there. Let's say he's sleeping here. Uh, his destination is 3,000 amot. So he goes to the end of 2,000 amot and puts bread there. Now he has extended 2,000 amot from that point. So he's able to, on the top to walk 2,000 amot to where he bread is and another 1,000 amot to his destination. Mm -hmm. How does bread give him the opportunity to do that? Because when by bring, putting bread there, he says, Really, I am staying here with the bread. Person is where his bread is. Person is where his soul dies. So he says, I'm sleeping here, but really, I'm, but that my center, my epicenter is here. So he can't go to the, he changed the, the other direction. He changed the epicenter. Normally, a person is in the middle, in the epicenter where he's staying. But over here, he said that I am at the edge of my epicenter, and my center is 2,000 or more south. He can't go 2,000 or more north. Right. That's it. You can't even go one step north anymore. Right. If you went all the way to thousand and put the bread there, he he could only stay there and He's not. He's at the edge of his, his perimeter. He's at the edge. Yeah. So let's say these two guys who borrowed this uh, this row, one of them has to go. They both are staying in this house over here. One of them needs to uh, wear this row in the evening for a party that's 3,000 amount to the south. So he made a, um, a roof over here, 2,000 amount uh, away, and he's going to go to the south. But the other one who has, wants to go to the shul, it's in the north, 3,000 amount to the north. He made a roof, 2,000 amount to the north. Poor garment. So, so what's the bottom line? The garment, they cannot take garment. If they did that, the, uh, the garment cannot go even one inch to the south because of the guy who's going to the north. And they cannot go even one inch to the north because of the guy who's going to the south. Ah, so, so it has, has to, to stay right in the middle. They have to combine their... their, their so uh, how would he borrow from the other guy? He would go to the place where he's sleeping. But he's not supposed to go back. No, he can go to that place, he said. 
In other words, w w oh. the, the, the concept number one is that the garment has the limits of both. And now, since we know this concept, we have to see how exactly to do it because with the scenario that I described to you is not helping them. The way they made a roof for each other mm -hmm. is that now they borrowed it, but they're not going to be able to carry it. Mm -hmm. So they can't do it. Altitude or longitude? How does it work? Because you can walk a lot. Altitude? You mean up vertically? Yeah, vertically. Does it count vertically when you go up a mountain? Because really, you could be in one mile, but you can walk a lot. Right. I know. Yeah. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. Or you're in flat ground, you can walk a long. How does it work? It it's the actual sp Ac space. Space. So on a mountain, you could be. Uh, you go up Mount Everest. Whatever. On, on a mountain peak. Yeah. You can walk a thousand, like... Because you, you really usually ascend the mountain in a yeah. certain way, right? And let's say 5,000 or more. And you could be walking an entire day, yeah. but it's really very short. Yeah. If you would go straight, it would be 2,000 or more. Yeah. But this way, it's taking you to, to, to uh, 10,000 or more. Yeah. So then, the yeah, so you lost interest. Oh, okay. So question, Rabbi, can they exchange uh, each other's bread and uh, place it in two different opposite places? So this way, the garment would be... Yeah, once the, during uh, once Yom Tov starts, mentally they can say, "Oh, usually my bread. No, really, my bread is not there. My bread is there." Because we say that you gotta put the bread on erev Yom Tov, and uh, wherever your bread is in in, in your mind, on erev Yom, whatever your bread is on erev Yom Tov, that locks it in, and you cannot change it until next year. It doesn't make uh, sense. Uh, the other guy that uh, uh, walked 2,000 or more and uh, placed his bread, changed his mind, and said, I'm not sleeping there, I'm going to have my bread here. In this case, it doesn't make sense because the other guy needs it to go there, right? Uh, but it does make sense in many other places. Like, for example, let's say I have to go somewhere, which is 3,000 or more away, or 4,000 or more away maximum. Then it does make sense to me to put it at the edge of my 2,000 or more, because then I'm extending 2,000 hours more. You, but you, you just said you have to put it there prior. You do it, but you got to do it at a Yom Tov. You have to know where you're going to be. You have to know your plans. You have to know from before Yom Tov. So where on Yom Tov itself, you cannot. If you change, you, on Yom Tov, it's not okay. On Yom Tov, let's say that you got a text message. I don't know how you figured out how you saw this text message. But you got a word that there is a party going on, more than 2,000 hours. You, you can't go there because you, you're limited. You're limited. Yom Tov is uh, uh, limited. And you can't put the bread anymore. Okay. So Gemara says like this. So if the two guys borrowed like that a uh, garment, one made a, uh, a roof to the north and the other one made a roof to the south. The one who made a roof to the north could only go as far north as the limit of the one who made the roof to the to the south, and the one who made the roof to the south could only go as far south as the permissibility of the one who's going to the north. If they maximized it, in other words, each one put a a roof exactly two thousand one to the north and exactly one to the south, and the garment cannot move it's from like, that. Like you take two circles, right? You go like this. The space in the middle is where they can move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The middle space that touches. Yeah, that's called overlap. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's it, yes. Overlap, good. So now, so okay, so let's just read it inside. The im matsu et at and if they maximize their tchum, ze, this one, we are on last or short line, lo yizizena mimkoma. How do you say move in Hebrew? Zuz. La zuz means to move. Lo yezizena memkoma means? From its place. You don't move it from its place. You cannot move it from its place. So Next Gemara. Itmar, it was said, Shnaim shalakhu chavit ubehima bishutfut. Two people bought an Erev Yom Tov, a barrel with wine, and an animal. Now, 
they bought, so now, this, this is the interesting case, because uh, they bought as partners, let's say uh, the, uh, the barrel and an animal, barrel with wine and an animal, let's say cost $1,000. They gave $500 each. So for all intents and purposes, they are equal <laughs> partners in both. Yeah. In, um, in the animal that's holding this barrel with wine and in the wine. They own both together, jointly. Rav Amar, Rav says like this, Chavid muteret ubehima asura. The wine is permissible to carry and an animal is prohibited to carry. Ushmuel Amar chavid nami asura. And Shmuel says even wine is prohibited. Now, what do, what do we mean muteret and asura prohibited and, um, and, and, and move it? This is built on the Gemara before. You remember with the garment before, we said that they could only carry it in the overlap? Mm -hmm. So comes along Rav and says, Chavid Moteret. The wine is not subject to the overlap. It's not <laughs> only permissible overlap. The wine you could carry anywhere you want. In other words, since we both of you, let's say Cyril and me, we're the ones who bought it. I, give, I, I take the barrel, I give half of it to Israel, I leave the half for myself. Israel could go take the wine wherever he wants, whatever his limit is, and I take it to my limit, even if it's not in the overlap area. We'll have to figure out why. Wine is not subject to this problem. But animal is subject. Animal is a problem. Animal could only go into the overlap area. In other words, it has two tchumen, yours and mine. The wine doesn't have yours and mine. It has, half of it has yours and half of it has mine. So you, you, you say the animal would feel the same because they both... Oh, you may think like this. Right. If, if the wine, yeah. we, could split, I mean, we could do that. Maybe animal the same thing. But you, if you think about it, you could see the difference between wine and animal. Animal yeah. stays whole. Animal wine you need whole, otherwise it's dead. Yeah. The wine you could split. The yeah. animal is one entity. Is the wine has the same... Uh, Wine, no, wine. Well, wine is an item, it's an entity, and uh, water also, if you have a jug of water, you're also uh, subject to the same things. We have, when you say water, you mean the case before with the bar, bread? The chala, yeah. With the chala? No. We're talking about wine that's in its own pure form. You see it, it's not mixed anywhere, and therefore it, it's just like any other item. Uh, if you're asking me, what if I mixed wine into the dough, it's not like water because wine has a taste. Water doesn't have a taste. You will feel the taste of wine in the water. In the, <laughs> in the bread. Does it matter that it's in a barrel uh, and there's only one barrel? Like you can't split the barrel? Yes. No, you could. You, you could. You could open it and drain into, into a, a bottles, into bags. Into it. You could split the barrel. So the wine itself would be permissible to go anywhere itself by itself, but the barrel itself would not be able to. No, barrel, barrel, it, we could decide who, barrel, no, because barrel is but tilted to the wine. When we say barrel of wine, our Same mind thing. is on the wine, the wine, and barrel is only to contain it. Wine, yeah. So, so what we could decide between you and me is who is going <laughs> to take and drain half into his own barrel. barrel. And who's gonna take the barrel? Gonna keep the barrel, the, the the half a barrel. Back in the day, like you would take an animal, right? If it's a big chag, you can't eat a whole cow, right? Like you would take two families or even a, a lamb. Okay. Two families would split it, and 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 for Rosh Hashanah or for some big chag, uh -huh. they would go fifty-fifty on an animal because Good. it's too big or it's too expensive. Uh -huh. So they go to the butcher. Two families, okay, we're gonna split this cow. We're gonna split this, uh, you know, animal. Now, right. what's wrong with having that done during Yom Tov? You could shat, right? And, and each one takes Excellent. Their so if you're planning to shek this animal, yes, but we're not planning. They're not planning to shek the animal. They just want to take it. It's to a transfer. This so animal is a donkey. Board. Let's say it's a donkey. That's why it doesn't say over here it's, it's a cow. Edible. Maybe it's a donkey. Donkey okay. that carries barrels of wine. Yeah, yeah. They bought they bought horse or donkey uh -huh. with wine. They really right with wine. Yeah. So it's not food. It's more of a. It's just an means a, a, of transportation. Right. So uh, now this concept. Let's say two families, yours family and my family, we bought a cow. 
Later on, we're going to shecht it, and each one of us is going to take some parts of the meat. Do we say that since when we bought it, it was a live animal, we didn't know, we didn't even know which parts of meat you're going to take and which parts I'm going to take. Mm -hmm. Only later on, when we actually picked it, the certain part of the animal became, became mine, and certain part became you know, yours. So how could we say that I could take my part to my limits and you could take your parts to your limits? When, because when we bought it, we didn't even know which part is going to become yours. What's the concept? There is a concept in the Torah that allows us to, to for you to carry to your part. And what, what is it called? Do you remember? It's called Yesh Breira. Yesh Breira means there is a clarification later. In other words, even though at the time when we bought it, no one knew. I didn't decide what I'm going to take. I wanted to first see what I'm going to like. You didn't decide what you're going to take. We bought it as one item. But if on the Yom Tov later when we shecht it, when we actually pick our stuff, we say that now that we know which part is yours and which part is mine, we go back in time to end of Yom Tov <laughs> and we say the parts that I picked, they got my limits. And the part that you picked later got your limits on Erev Yom Tov, even though everything is dependent on Erev Yom Tov. Right? It has to happen on Erev Yom Tov. Right. But and we didn't know which parts are yours, which part is mine. Mm -hmm. But we say, since it's going to become clear later, it's for sure going to, it only works if it's going to clear, for sure going to become clear later. So we could say that whatever is going to so really take place, we could say like this, that really takes place invisibly on Erev Yom Tov. And it only becomes apparent later. Do you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay. So Gemara is going to say like this now. Uh, we know that Rav says an interesting thing. That the wine, oh, you wow. split it and allowed. And the behemah is asura. Shmuel Omer, behem chavid nami asura. Shmuel holds that wine is also asur. So let's figure this out. My kasava Rav. What does Rav hold? Ika savar yesh breira. If Rav holds yesh breira, I feel the behemoth is three. If Rav says there is a breira, even the animal should be able to uh, split. Veika savar ein breira. And if he holds ein breira, I feel the chavit nami asura. If you hold no breira, then even wine should be asur because because wine was also one thing. Only later we drain half of it, and it became clear what uh, yours and was mine. Gemara says la alam kasavar yesh breira. Really holds the yesh breira. Um, it's look what Gemara is saying. That when it comes to animal, even if it's an animal that I am going to shecht, it's still a problem because the blood circulates from one area to another all the time. And you, you could have one part of your animal in my parts and part of my animal in your parts because of that. Usually because the blood isn't bitul, isn't the blood like bitul? Because we kind of spill it, we don't really apply it as a meat. But you know? blood is yeah, because blood is something that gives life. Blood, blood is something that gives uh, nour uh, uh, nourishment and sustenance and life and oxygen. So we say that it's not batel. Mm -hmm. It's not batel. So um, so therefore, you can't so, apply this concept. So you can't apply yesh bereira. Because Yanke Eivorim Me'adot, because the inter, that each part is interconnected. Each part is interconnected through blood, through uh, nourishment. Nourishment it only takes place as a unit, as a whole. So we're passing like Shmuel. So we're passing, the, no, we're passing like Rav still, that, because the Kasha was, if he holds a Brera, then even, not only uh, wine should be Mutar, but also an animal. Mm. And if he doesn't hold of it, then not only animals should be asur, but even the wine should be asur. Okay. We say, really, he holds of Breira. But even if you say Breira, and at some point, you know which parts you're taking, which parts I'm taking, but because up until, because the, because the parts are still interconnected through blood, so you have some of yours and mine, and some of mine and yours. So animal is out of question. So Gemara says, What about wine? Gemara goes to, so that's about Mukta. Gemara says like this. 
Амри Лей, Рав Кахана, Рав Аси, Лей Рав. Рав Кахана и Рав Аси now address Рав. Рав, who said that one is permissible to carry, the aim is not. Ли Исур Мукцу ло хашешу, ли Исур Тхумин хашешу. You are not concerned about Мукцу, but you're concerned about Тхумин? What does that mean? Um, Where's mixa, muksa comes in here? Because when we buy an animal... Oh, there's not kosher pork. No, no, we're talking about kosher animal. No, but the bottom half or whatever... Some no, 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 more than that, better than that. Let's say, let's say we buy an animal together. Half of it belongs to you. You're going to take half, I'm going to take half. I am removing your half from my usage. To me, your half is like muksa. And to you, my half is muktzah. Uh -huh. So if in this animal, half of it is muktzah for you and another half, so yours, muktzah for me, and blood goes back and forth, that means there is some muktzah in my part and some muktzah in your part. Right. The same idea that we have in terms of tchumen uh, could, could also make it muktzah, a problem with muktzah. So Gimur says, you're saying that Tchumen is only to carry it further, but muktza is to use it here. Even, let's say, I don't want to carry it anywhere. Am I even allowed to move it and to shecht it and to eat it? It may be muktza. Some of your blood could be in my, uh, my parts and it's a muktza and, and vice versa. So, you, if you're saying that muktza is not a problem, which is mochamur, muktza is mochamur than tchumen, so, uh, why, oh, so, what, um, so why are you talking about tchumen? Talk about muktza. Ask, prohibit it because of muktza. So Gemara says, Shotik, he didn't answer. He, he was quiet. He didn't answer. Now, Shotik means that he, he had an answer, but he didn't want to say. What could be the answer why Mukta is not a problem? Um, so I don't know. Let's see a little. There's no Rashi. Let's see it further. Uh, uh, Gemara says, My have Allah. What's the halacha Rabbi Oishe? Omar Yesh Breira. There is Breda, but Rabbi Yochan Omar in Breda. But so Rabbi Yosha, yes, Breda, but none. Okay, that's loaded further down. So what does it mean that he didn't answer? He had an answer, but he didn't say. What's Breda? Breda is uh, to explain. Later I explained that even though earlier you didn't know which one is going to be yours, but since later you're going to know. Go, designation going retroactively, go, going rich backwards in time. So, Gemara, so we're going to stop here. Gemara says that even though Muktzah is a good question, and even though he didn't answer it, but we don't say that Muktzah is a problem. In this situation. In this situation. Okay. Oh, man, animal. Muktzah meaning that Blood. Your part is mukta to me, my part is mukta to you. We, learned, this, this, we learned another part in Beita, a similar concept, I think. Similar, yeah. I oh. remember going over something like that. Like May, oh, there is a concept that something which is not mukta to another Jew not is not mukta to me either. That's probably the answer. Also, why? Mukta is the Rabbanan, right? So is this Brera concept. So why is mukta more stringent than the Brera? Because the Gemara, uh, one of the rabbis said, mention Mukta. Why are you mentioning Breira? Right. They're both Rabbanan. It's much more that Mukta, it's much more that Gemara, that Mukta is more Hamur. But, as opposed to, but Mukta is the Rabbanan. Tchumin could be the Araita. Tchumin also the Rabbanan. But Mukta is considered, Mukta, everyone, Mukta is uh, always, uh, like it's, it's treated like the Araita. It's treated very Hamur. We treat Mukta very uh, restringently. So they're asking, Look, why aren't you... But maybe you could say that since Muxi is the Rabban, it's not a problem. Tchumen is more a problem. There, are few, there could be many answers. We already came up. Mark is saying an answer. I'm saying an answer. But in the Gemara, he didn't see. This teaches us that sometimes you have what to say. Not necessarily you have to say. You could just be right. But you don't have to make sure that the other guy knows that you're right. You could be right quietly. Thank you very much, Lucy.
Thank you, Rabbi. Rabbi, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Rabbi, I want to say something. Of course, I'll be.